Bravo to Cornell University. Who would have thought we'd be at a point where we would need to celebrate the rejection of a student proposal that would require professors to give a trigger warning during classes for anything that some students might consider traumatic. The proposal, which Cornell University's Student Assembly voted unanimously in favor of, urged university officials to require instructors who present graphic traumatic content that may trigger the onset of symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder to provide advance notice to students and refrain from penalizing students who opt out of exposure to such content. Yes, some Cornell students were literally asking to mandate warnings like you'd show before a TV show for curriculum that covered topics that might touch on racial or transphobic violence, harassment, self-harm, domestic violence. The Wall Street Journal editorial board wrote, quote, the entire idea of a trigger warning for speech is antithetical to the idea of a university. In a previous age, no one would have taken it seriously. But this is the era of woke censorship, so it's news when campus leaders push back, as they have at Cornell. And that's where the Bravo comes in. Cornell President Martha Pollack and Provost Michael Kotlikoff wrote in rejecting the resolution, learning to engage with difficult and challenging ideas is a core part of a university education, essential to our students' intellectual growth and to their future ability to lead and thrive in a diverse society. Well, good for them. Because this issue of student-requested trigger warnings is not isolated to Cornell. You know, in recent weeks, students at Stanford and Columbia have been triggered by, of course, conservative judges coming to speak on campus. Joining me now is program officer for the Nonpartisan Foundation for Individual Rights and Expression. She wrote the letter to Cornell urging them not to implement the Assembly's recommendation, Sabrina Kanza. Thanks so much for coming on the program. Appreciate it. All right. So why do you think that requiring trigger warnings is such a problem? So when students are demanding that they are that they must be informed that there might be uncomfortable material before they face that material, they're really doing themselves a disservice. Um, in the real world, when they're out of school, they're not going to get trigger warnings <laughs> when they face, you know, uncomfortable topics. And also, this is a violation of faculty members' rights to academic freedom. Faculty need to be able to determine if they want to provide a trigger warning. And that's up to them, not up to students and not up to administrators. Well, here's something from The New Yorker that none of the students want to talk about, right? And that is the trigger warnings may not even work. And I'm quoting now, the results of around a dozen psychological studies published between 2018 and 2021 are remarkably consistent and they differ from conventional wisdom. They find that trigger warnings do not seem to lessen negative reactions to disturbing material in students, trauma survivors, or those di diagnosed with PTSD. But it just seems very often these days, Sabrina, that the facts don't matter. It doesn't even matter if they work or not. It's become this sort of like calling card, this badge to say, well, we support trigger warnings and, and other things like that. That's exactly right. Um, trigger warnings are literally a self-fulfilling prophecy. <laughs> when you know you tell someone that they should be uncomfortable with something, they're going to be uncomfortable. They that material might not have even offended them or, you know, traumatized anyone prior to that warning. But because you gave that warning, there you go. They're not feeling good anymore. Are you surprised Cornell pushed back this hard? I would say I'm impressed. Um, <laughs> Cornell really stood up for what they call, you know, their core mission with academic freedom and free speech. And, you know, we think there's more Cornell and other universities can do for that. Um, and, of course, at FIRE, we'd love to help. Yeah, but I will bet you that there are going to be a lot of other universities that are going to continue to be under enormous pressure to buck what Cornell did. Um, and, you know, depending on the university, depending on the situation, there'll be protests, et cetera. And, and that's why you guys are going to stand up to them and say, no mas. Sabrina Conza, exactly. thanks so much for coming on the program. She wrote the letter to Cornell. you got to give her credit. Appreciate it. That does it for us tonight. Thanks for watching. Banfield starts. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your cable provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below 
to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.